I believe that we will be able to avoid a climate disaster. Innovators now have way more funding than ever before. Private companies are making serious climate commitments. Governments are passing advanced climate legislation. As a result, there are a number of clean technologies in development that cover every area of emission. But when I first started working on this issue, emissions were 51 billion tons each year. And we're still at that level, and time is running out. Alongside my belief that we can solve it, it can be difficult to actually contemplate the scale of change required for this energy transition. Of course, we have to invent new ways of doing these things, but it took 100 years to build a very energy intensive industrial economy. We also need to replace all of that physical infrastructure in a much, much shorter period of time. There's never been a project of this scale, nothing even close. A tool I use to help people understand how far we have to go is what I call the green premium, or the extra cost for a clean alternative over the current way of doing things. We have seen progress. We see some areas, wind and solar, electric cars, where the green premium is low enough that we can start that scaling up. There are other areas, like air travel or cement and steel, where the green premium is still very high. And that's where we need to prime the market with the right policies. We need investment. We need innovative ideas to drive that number down. Eventually, you get a product that isn't a lot more expensive, but has no emissions. And then the entire world can adopt that simply because it's to everyone's benefit to use those new products. Despite how daunting this is, I am optimistic. It requires incredible partnerships, even more innovators, deeper engagement by governments, businesses, and individuals. As we engage all of humanity, it's time for all of us to get down to this hard work.